We can deal with composite functions with mapping in sets, but we could also do this with mapping composite functions with tables. And so when we look at the, the evaluating these composite functions, we have G embedded inside F. So we're going to start with G first. So it says G of 1. F of G of 1 means that, I'm sorry, negative 1 means that if we start, our input for G is 1, our output is going to be 0. We're going to use that output and put that into the F function, and we're going to get an output of 0. So that's going to be equal to 0. So F of G of negative 1 is equal to 0, and we can see that if we follow the mapping. Here we're going to do F first. So we're going to do f of 3. f of 3 is going to give us 2. We're going to input that 2 into our x, and that gives us the output of 4. So g of f of 3 is equal to 4. We can also apply the inverse. We just have to remember that when we talk about the inverse function, it's going to go in this direction. So my input is 1, my output. Well, that really means the output of G is 1. We're looking for the input of G. So we're looking at the output of G to the input. And that's going to give us a value of 3. So we take that value of 3, and then we're going to put it into the F function. So we're going to go in this direction. We're going to have an input of 3. Our output is going to be 2. Okay, so when we go in, when we're using the, the inverse, we're going to go in the opposite direction. Okay, once we get the inverse, we're going to go in this direction to get the value of 2. We also can talk about domain and range. So if we assume that these are the only values of f and g that we have, what is the domain and range of g of f of x? Well, when we talk about the domain of g of f of x, we need to be able to input the x into the domain and get outputs of g here. But not all of these will give us, not all of these inputs will give us an output. So that means that can't be the domain of the composite function. So if I have an input, if I check all my inputs here, my input of x gives me 0, and it does not show up in any of these. The It's not an input for x of g. So we're going to have to exclude that as a possible input. If I input x is 1, I get f is 1. I could put that into the g function, and I get an output of 5. So that one works. That's an output. <clears throat> so 1 and 5 are inputs and outputs of that g of f of x function. If I input 3, I get an output of 2. I can input 2, get an output of 4. 3 and 4 are inputs and outputs of the, that composite function. I can try 5. I input 3, or sorry, my output is 3. I can input 3 into this function. My output is 1. There's an input and output of that function. So when I look at the domain, I look, the domain are all the possible inputs. So the domain of this function is going to be 1, 3, and 5. The range would be the output of this function. So do, the outputs are going to be 5, 4, and 1. So there's the domain range of this function given this input and output table. If we switch it around and say, what is the domain range of f of g of x? That means that we have to input x into g first. So this is going to be my possible domain. This is going to be my possible range. So I'm going to input negative 1, output of 0. That's going to be an output. If I put input 0, my output is 0. So there's a pair. Negative 1 is my input. 0 is my output. Input 1, I get 5. 
I go to 5, I have an output of 3, my input is 1, my output is 3. Okay, so that is possible domain and range. Here I get an input of 2, output of 4. That 4 has no place to go in F, so that is not a potential input for this composite function. And then lastly, my input is 3, output is 1. I can go from 1 to 1. Yeah, that one works. So there's my domain and range. I have a domain of negative 1, positive 1, positive 3. My range is going to be 0, 1, and 3. Okay, so I'm just going to write that in. My domain for this function is going to be negative 1, 1, and 3. And the range is going to be 0, 1, and 3.